For our starter, we're gonna go for simple and cheap. We'll start with these foundations and a raised one for the TC. A half wall on the door side and two full walls for the TC triangle. This combination here will make sense later on when we build this into the main loot. For now, we just wanna make sure that we can seal ourselves off. Above the half wall, we can add a frame, which will be our entrance for now. You can start with a wood door, but craft a metal one as soon as you can. The TC goes into the raised triangle like this, which will also allow for a small furnace to fit next to it. A very simple starter that has all of the stuff you need for the very beginning of a fresh wipe. Home. This will only cost this much to build, and it includes all of the deployables. Now we're going to do a small add-on so that we are not stuck behind one door in a 1x1. One one. We'll build the foundations, and right here we need to raise this up a half height so that it will line up with the roof bunker mechanism later on. This door will lead into the other half of the bunker and we can seal it just like this. To save on a little cost here, we're only going to extend the square section up the half height. As you may have guessed, double doors go into both of these frames. For now, the extra square in the front will help you jump into the entrance. For the early game, the inside of our new room will look like this. We've relocated our three sleeping bags, added a level 2, furnaces, and we have some space for boxes underneath the triangle. This frees up space so that we can transform our main loot room into this configuration. If you're unsure how to do this, I will link a video in the top right to make this very easy for you. Once you have that sorted out, and also when you find yourself a glass window, you can build this in front of the TC, which secures it a bit more. Now adding this part makes upgrading the stuff underneath a bit harder, but if you really are strapped for storage, you can use this. You will be able to add four more large boxes under the roof bunker, which we'll add next, so the choice is yours. The roof bunker will be added to this square here. Roof tiles can make building tricky, so believe me when I say the easiest way to add this in is by building it exactly like this. It is also impossible to fit through the roof with a double door here. You can remove the door for now, but when you get your first garage door, this is definitely the spot where it should go. We can add in the slanty roof like this. We want all the walls that touch the roof to be hard side facing in so that people cannot soft side them. This doesn't really matter when you get to upgrading it, but as long as it's stone, it's potentially a weak spot. While I'm here to open this bunker, you need to add a twig frame down here and a triangle roof to either side. The triangle itself won't open it unless you upgrade it to the same material as the original slanty roof, stone in this case. This leaves us with the half walls on top. We need to make sure that these never get soft sided either so we can bring up the rest to match the height which will conceal them. We'll need a bit on each side. When deciding which way these extra walls should face, I always try to face their soft sides towards the core of the base which will secure the center. We can also add a square over the roof and then we will have this. Once that is done, the bunker looks like this when it's closed and like this when it's opened. Having this as your main entrance in a real server is dangerous, so the next thing we must do is extend our entrance. Second floor entrances are very strong, so that's what we'll add in. We'll need to bring up the triangle two full heights first like this. Adding this triangle here will make traveling through this area very fluid. An alternative would be adding three furnaces at the bottom, which is also a good way. The choice is yours. Either way, at the top here we'll add a frame and for now a double door. Now our entrance is on the second floor, but we also need a way up for now. So what we'll do is add in these two permanent triangles with a twig staircase like this. At this point, it is best to upgrade all of this roof to metal, which will stop Raiders from being able to 8 rocket the entire top of the base. This is a great investment of metal at this time. One thing that is optional but super strong with a drop down entrance like this is of course a trap. I like to place one here, which will help you if people try to go deep. Now our base will look like this. 
During this build, you have to balance expanding and upgrading while also remembering to add needed stuff to your core like storage. I like to add these four boxes in next. This is very easy to construct since there is no raised foundation on any side of them. As far as our main loot, well it's time to upgrade some things. These two bottom pieces can only be upgraded if you pick up these two boxes, which is kinda crappy, but the long term benefits justify it. When you can, add a garage door here, and then we can upgrade the TC room. You can see it's kinda weak right now. You upgrade everything quite easily by removing the window and furnace, but for the video, I'll just fly in there. Next we'll upgrade the walls in the main loot room. There is one we actually cannot see from here since we added the two extra boxes on that triangle earlier. From the outside it's located here and upgraded to metal. We still have a shelf we can add here for more storage and of course upgrades but we can leave it like this for now. The next thing we want to do is add some honeycomb. I've pre-built the locations for them here. It's pretty simple once you see why all these pieces are here. This will be the way up which is why there are extra pieces and it looks confusing. Before we bring up the walls, first we need to upgrade the stone sections that are on either side of the entrance triangle. The reason for this is once we add a layer of honeycomb, we will no longer be able to upgrade this wall which will weaken the base too much. So upgrade the full and half wall on each side. Once we do that, we are ready to add honeycomb around the core and we can start with these three triangles on each side. We can add the half walls on top from the top of the base, so right now all we need to add is the full walls around the bottom. These honeycomb sections are very important indeed as they directly protect our main core inside the bunker. These are the six sections that should have been brought up. From the roof we can now add the rest of each honeycomb. They will all need a half height extension with the triangle top. All of this can be done with stone for now. There's no reason to add an extra triangle floor in the middle there above the full walls, but you could do that if you want to. Once they are all the same level as the core, we can begin to work on our way up. We'll first need to add a section of triangle honeycomb to protect our core. We could do so like this. We'll bring this up an extra half height as well. For the stone slanty roof, we'll want both of these walls to have hard side facing in so they look like this. Next is the triangle roof in the middle. Now that you can see it, the foundations make more sense. We also want to honeycomb the squares out of stone on both sides. Once again, we'll want to bring them up to be level with the top. The final honeycomb will be here at the back. We'll want to bring these up all the way too. We can do the first level from the ground and the half height from the top. On the second floor here, these will become loot rooms, but for now the base should look like this. In this next part, we'll enclose the basic second floor layout. We start here at the front, where we'll have two entrances. This should help with the door campers, a little bit. We're going to have a square on each side, four frames for vision, and two for airlocks. The vision will come in the form of four shop fronts like this. You want both double doors to swing in, and then they will block each front door. Walling in our second floor is easy, we basically want to extend everything around the edge up one full level.
We need a way up to the roof, which means leaving one of the ceilings open. We'll use this central triangle so that we can secure it better later on. Mark out the top with the hatch and the rest of the ceiling can then be built. This is like a mini game for me that I can never win. It's like playing which shape goes where. Once that's done, on the top here we'll want to add a door so that this entry point is a bit more secure. Now I did make a mistake here, this triangle on the very top will become the way up to the roof above so it should be left wood so we can remove it later on with ease. I guess we'll pretend it's wood for now, sorry about that. We can come back inside and add a jump up here. Now one thing I like to make very clear here is that you cannot build anything at all here. It will ruin the bunker forever. I can show you if you build anything here it will keep the bunker closed as you can see. So please don't do this to your base. A couple of more things you should add to this floor immediately are this wall to stop people from shortcutting your door path. Metal works best here. Also, I like to at least add a garage door here for now. We have a lot of stuff to add up here, but first I want to show you the final upgrades and additions to the core. I've already upgraded everything to its final state. Do this at your own pace obviously, but make sure everything is the same as in the video to get the max benefits. I'm going to go ahead and pan around down here so that you could see all of the upgrades that you're aiming for. Some of this stuff down here doesn't need to be HQM and now let's add a garage door here. We have this single triangle here and since the furnaces are better on the second floor of this base, which we'll get to soon, we need to add something important here. This is your choice, I tend to simply add more storage using this shelf. The main thing here is adding a garage door. Like I said, I'm going to add in a few boxes, you could add a locker, a level 2, vending machines, really whatever you do need. If you notice we have a lot of space above each of these rooms. Now in terms of efficiency this is bad so what we'll do is add another shelf. Using a square shelf here on this side will block passage through the window of the raiders which is doubly good. Is doubly a word? I don't know. We can also use the same thing on this side. Once again there are many variations of loot rooms you could add here. I'd like to use this one for trios and below. With those in and everything upgraded the core bunker of the base is done and there is a ton of storage in it. The main core of your base is meant for your main loot, important stuff. Sulfur, GP, rockets, and all that good PvP stuff. You know what I'm talking about. The next thing we'll do is start building up our second floor. There's a lot of cool stuff you can add up here too, and it's very customizable. First we'll add in three full loot rooms, the first one over here, and the other two in these squares. As you can see, they are separated, which will increase the raid cost overall. For this one, we'll need to add a metal wall on the left, and then we can add the half-height shelf. Of course, a garage door goes on the front. One more thing we'll be upgrading both of these walls, and rotating the one on the loot room so that it cannot be soft-sided from the level above. To add in the other two loot rooms, we first need to secure above the drop-down a bit more and upgrade the door it has. This will separate both of the loot rooms and then we can add the half height and garage door to both. We'll add stuff here soon. For the loot room design, of course there are many options here. Now for solo duo trio, once again I like to use this one. It balances storage and mobility. 
Now there is also an alternative here, which I do use for the other two. Adding ramps to each part like this gives a cool concept. The idea behind using this in this design is if raiders go through the back walls, they will end up not being able to ladder in easily. This will also be sheet metal in the end, which makes it even stronger. So you can use this idea if you want, it all comes down to what you need. The next kind of space we can use is these triangles along the edge. There are three total. The way we're going to use these without neglecting the raid cost is by adding a window frame and glass window. Now it's much easier to add whatever you're going to add first and then place the window frame and window. There are a bunch of different combinations you can use. I really like the three furnaces on the second floor like this. After they are in, build a frame and add the window. Now another option that I tend to use is adding a single locker into the triangle. This is a great way to place kits around without filling in your hallways. I actually like this so much that I'm going to add another one to this side. It's always good to have multiple locations with gear in case of an online raid. The proper way to use this concept is to remove the window with the hammer, do what you gotta do, and put it back. Always remember to have a few metal frags to repair it, so that you don't have to keep crafting windows. Since the second floor has a lot of space, there are definitely more things you can add to it. I like to have the repair bench here at the front. I tend to use sleeping bags or beach towels here, but some people like to put beds here instead, which works fine if you don't mind jumping around them. The best spot for the level 3 in this space is right here. Now one thing you have to do before you can place it permanently is place the two frames and the two doors so they don't get blocked. We'll come back to that though, let's add in the doors starting at the front. A garage door is fine here, but once you get an armor double, this is the spot for it. Now we can add in all of the following frames and garage doors through our second floor. This will strengthen our door path and section off a top down raid. When we arrive at the level 3 location, after you place the doors, you can easily place the level 3 right into the middle of the two frames. Aside from some material upgrades, this floor is pretty much done. Now let's upgrade, strengthen some key areas, and prepare to build the roof and defense floors. The first big thing is upgrading this door to a garage door. We'll want to upgrade the important floor tiles to metal. We'll start here and upgrade all of the core pieces. This stuff around the end can be left stone since it only leads into honeycomb. Upgrade around just like this and be sure to get these last two square pieces since they are above our loot rooms, as you can see. On the second floor, adjacent to the loot rooms, we'll want to upgrade the floor and wall along with all of the pieces in the loot room itself, all to metal. You can reach all of these pieces without moving anything. I'm just going to fly around in the video to make it quicker. Do this to the other loot room area as well. Everything else on this floor is fine as stone. From the outside, the base will look like this. On the roof here, we can now add a heli garage. We'll start in front of the door and add a frame on each of the squares around it like so. There should be three total. Next we'll add two window frames in between each one which will seal above the main core as well. We can then fill in the entire roof. We'll need six glass windows here and three garage doors for the frames.
Like I said, this will be a heli garage and not everyone can land in such a small space here. So what we'll do is add some extra overhang to the edge around the base like this. This will also help with some defense. To remove some of the angles players can use against you while you land, you can add in low walls around the balcony we just created. The top of the base should now look like this. Next we can add in the very top defense floor. We'll add in all of the elevator hatches in as we go. The way up will be an additional two levels and contained to this central triangle. For stability reasons, we'll add in this set of frames to each side, kind of like an extra L bracket. These will help hold up the overhangs at the top. We'll need to add in a way to get up through this tube. We could use ladders only, but triangle hatches are a bit more secure. On the top here, we'll add a square to each side of the triangle and then another one hanging on the left side of each of them. You can now see why we needed the frames. Next, we'll add the door frames as we would use in a normal roof design. You could get fancier here, but I'm just gonna use three windows on each side like this. In the center here, I'm going to add two frames and then the entire roof. Now the overall shape is complete. On these middle frames, I add three double doors all that swing out. If you want to access to the very top, I would put another hatch right in the middle, above. Also add in the single doors now. To ensure people cannot shortcut a way in here, we'll add the siren lights to block them. You can see the angles we are working with now and it's up to you which embrasures you want to use. I like to use the vertical window embrasures and we will need 9 of them. Some people like to have these facing the inside of the window, which is all preference, but I found out over the years that my preference is the outside, like this. The defense floor is pretty much done at this point. There is one more thing you can add if you like. If we take a look over here, I've added these ramps. These ramps give you a few more angles and help you peek a specific angle easier while crouched. This is very helpful while controlling something like an M2. I'll add these into the base, but you can skip them if you don't like them. I put them next to the door and facing out, which I believe is the best way to put them. Once again, if you want a way up to the very top, you can add another hatch right into here. Now the base is pretty much done as far as shape and size, but we do have a couple of final upgrades to do. The most important upgrades are on the bottom floor around our main core. If you start on the left of this shop front, you'll want to upgrade both of these triangle honeycombs. They are 1.5 levels high. Remember to do this on both sides. <laughs> 
It's up to you if you want to upgrade the foundations. Now, not many people would aim rockets at the floor. However, if your terrain is really bad and these foundations are way higher than shown in the video here, then I would suggest upgrading them to metal as well. Another important upgrade is the two walls down here. The foundation isn't important, but the two walls definitely should be metal. In case you were wondering, yes, you can reach them with the roof here. With those upgrades done, the base is pretty much done as well. So I hope that this base works as well for you as the original one did. Let me know if it does. On that note, thank you very much for watching the video. See ya!